So our next uh, quarterfinal is uh, Anne Machado of Brazil against Stephanie uh, Barrett of Canada. Um, this could have been uh, a really <laughs> high pressure uh, kind of concluding quarterfinal to decide which, wh who was going to go through, but uh, the qualification has been decided. Um, so for, for these archers, it's all about showing how good they are and what they would bring to the team if they were selected for Tokyo. So there's still a lot at stake. They still want to show off their skills. Yeah, I think there's still some pressure for them. Now, um, one of the great things about archery is the, 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 the difference in ages, you know, the range of ages that uh, can represent their country. So here we've got a 21-year-old in the Brazilian up against 42-year-old Stephanie Barrett of Canada. Do you, do you think age helps or hinders? I think experience with the bow will help, you know, and probably life experience as well. So... That's the beauty of archery, you, you can do it, you know, until you're quite old, you know, like 60s or 70s. Well, Stephanie Barrett's going to go first, the 2018 Canadian champion. Done most of her archery indoors over the winter months. Nine possible ten. Nine possible ten. But he's performing really well here outdoors in Monterey. Ocho. Canadian Eight. has an early advantage. Yes. Two Ten. excellent shots from Barrett. Ocho. Machado Eight. drops back now. Three points between them. One arrow to go. Oh, you can see the disappointment on her face there, couldn't you? Yeah. Might be marked up. Way out. What do you think happened there? Four. Probably, I would say the wind. She seems quite young. She might not have a very strong bow. So her arrows might be kicked off to the side a lot more than Stephanie's. So how are these um, bows sort of fixed, you know, the power and the strength and, and, and the weight of them and so on? How, how are they adjusted and how do they decide that? Well, they decided by how much you can actually physically pull and be are able to pull through a whole competition and, you know, 72 hours of qualifying. So that, that brings me to the subject of training. Um, you know, what, what sort of training does an archer do or should be doing? I think we should all have like some strength and conditioning uh, in our programs. But shooting the bow, I think, is the more, most important part of it. Because that's the right movement. That's where you need to be strong. I love the way they place the podium just in front of them. It's, that's you know that's, that's where they all want. That's your goal. That's where you want to be standing at the end of the day. But Machado is going to have to come back into this. She's a set down. Siete, seven. left for Machado, aren't they? Yeah, that's her last three arrows on the left. Another one going Ocho left. So, uh, what, what can we presume? The wind's blowing left to right across the range, so they're overcompensating, maybe? As we can't tell where the flag is going, Two. I can't tell if it's blowing left or if they're overcompensating. Yeah, we did, uh, we, we, we uh, 
covered the Porridge event last weekend, and they had uh, all the flags on top of the targets, which were uh, <laughs> really useful. I think they do here too, but we just can't see them on the frame. Barrett taking a look down the uh, down the coach's telescope there. I'm, I'm amused by the music that they're playing in between uh, each set because obviously it's normally done to whip up the crowd, <laughs> but we have no crowd there this time. And if anything, I imagine it's uh, confirmation then that that set's gone to Barrett. Um, yeah, if anything, it's it's probably distracting for the uh, for the archers. I find music usually helpful to, you know, concentrate or, you know, think about something else. Take your mind off the pressure. Yeah. So, third set. Machado needs to win this or it's all over. Cuatro, four. She looks away in disgust, shakes her head. Seems to be at a loss as to what to do and how to turn things around. Yes. And then she sees ten. her opponent, Stephanie Barrett, get a 10. Siete, seven. Another 10 for the Canadian. Yes. Ten. Well, if ever she was sending a message to the selectors to say that she should be going to Tokyo, yes. this is it. And finally, ten. a 10 for Machado. She finishes on a high. It's a good way to finish a match, I think. And the match Ocho. is Stephanie Barrett's. She's through to the semi finals. And so we will have. Two Canadian archers in the semi final, one Brazilian and an Ecuadorian. So, a really uh, great performance from Stephanie Barrett, uh, the archer from Ontario. She trains with the Caledon and Peel Archery Club and they'll be cheering her on, watching these pictures. Yeah, very good choosing on her part. And I'll tell you what, she's going to be difficult to beat in the semi-finals. So what have we learned from these uh, quarterfinals, from these uh, four matches so far about the conditions, you know, about what we can expect maybe in the uh, in the semis that are coming up? I think the semis are going to be interesting because the shooters have more experience. They, n they know what to expect from the field, from the wind. So that's going to be interesting to see. I think we clearly saw that experience is the key in those matches. So those highlights then from uh, our final quarter quarterfinal. Bumper the elbows. <laughs> 